between 9 and 11 million enslaved Africans were brought to Europe by European traders and slave masters from Africa between 1450 and 1870. The transatlantic trade of enslaved Africans took people to the other side of the world. For enslaved Africans taken by the Europeans, there was no hope of ever returning home. Men, women, and children were expected to work for their entire lives with no freedom or no rights. The slave owners did everything they could to make sure that the enslaved Africans forgot their languages, cultures, and religious beliefs. The enslaved Africans did all that they could to also resist their enslavement from the moment of capture and the journey across the Atlantic Ocean to the plantations, enslaved Africans rebelled, despite knowing that they would physically never get back to their countries or achieve freedom, they persisted in their resistance. Resistance took many forms. The enslaved Africans could purposefully damage machinery, work slowly, or openly rebel against their masters. Each expression of resistance by enslaved individuals or groups counted as acts of rebellion against the system of slavery. One of such expressions of resistance was by keeping the African cultures and traditions alive in words, names, music, and beliefs. Slave owners often tried to control this. Drumming was banned by plantation owners on the Caribbean island of St. Kitts, except at Christmas time. Such activity was seen as a threat by the owners. They knew that if the enslaved Africans developed a common sense of identity through African culture and traditions, one of the historic rebellions in the history of enslavement of Africans is Techis revolt or rebellion. It was an uprising amongst Jamaican Akan enslaved people from Ghana that occurred in St. Mary Parish, Jamaica, against the British from 1760 to 1761. Other Ghanaian ethnic groups, including the Achim, Nzima, Fanti, and Ashanti, would be involved in the rebellion. The rebellion was led by Nana Mensa Techi, who was from the Fanti ethnic group. This war was one of the most significant slave rebellions in the Caribbean during the 18th century before the Haitian Revolution, which began three decades later. Techi had been a paramount chief in the Iguafo township of the central region of Ghana before being captured in battle and enslaved by the Dutch. Before being enslaved, Techi was king of his village. He recalled selling prisoners of war to his rivals of the Ashanti and Zima and the hunter off into slavery as spoils of war to British slave traders. But ironically, he would become enslaved himself on a rival state and the Dutch defeated his army in battle near Elmina and sold him into slavery and he ended up in Jamaica. He and his subordinate planned to take over Jamaica from the British and to create a separate black country. The uprising was inspired by the successful resistance of free black people in Jamaica, such as the Asante Queen Nani and the Jamaican Maroons during the First Maroon War of the 1730s. Techi's war began on Easter Monday, 7th April, 1760. Techi and his followers began the rebellion by killing white masters and overseers on the frontier and Trinity plantations. The owner of the Trinity plantation Zachary Bailey, however, managed to escape. Enslaved people also rose up on the Esha estate owned by wealthy politician William Beckford and joined in the rebellion. Hundreds of rebels made their way to the storeroom at Fort Haldane, where they killed the storekeeper and captured the town of Port Maria from British colonial forces. Techi and his troops commanded nearly four barrels of gunpowder and 40 firearms and then overran the Haywood Hall plantation. By dawn, hundreds of other enslaved Africans had joined Techi and his followers. At Balad's Valley, the self-liberated Africans stopped to rejoice in their success. One person from the Esha decided to slip away and sound the alarm. At this point, these Africans did not leave behind their spirituality as Caribbean witch doctors quickly circulated around the camp dispensing a powder that they claimed would protect the men from injury in battle. 
In response, on April 9, 1760, Lieutenant Governor Sir Henry Moore dispatched the 74th Regiment, comprising 80 mounted militia from Spanish Town to St. Mary Parish. Ironically, the militia was joined by Maroons from Moore Town, Charlestown, and Scotts Hall, all in Jamaica. The Maroon contingent were commanded by Moore Town's White Superintendent, Charles Swiggle, and the Maroon officers reporting to him were Clash and Sambo from Moore Town, Kweku and Kane from Charlestown, and Kojo and Davi, the Maroon officers from Scotts Hall. On April 12, 1760, British troops and their Maroon allies attacked the rebels, wounding Taki in battle. Two days later, additional Maroons under British commanders engaged Taki and his followers in the Battle of Rocky Valley. Most of the rebels were killed. Many others fled into a cave near what is now called the Techi Falls, where they committed mass suicide. Techi and a few of his followers fled into the woods while they were pursued by Maroons. One British marksman attacking the Maroons shot and killed Techi and then severed his head. That head was then displayed on the pole in Spanish town until some of Techi's surviving followers took it down. Many of the remaining surviving rebels were captured and executed. Resistance, however, continued for nearly a year until 1761, when British colonial forces and their Maroon allies killed and captured the remaining followers. In May and June of 1761, a number of Techi's men who had surrendered were executed after trials in Spanish Town and Kingston, Jamaica. One of them named Anthony was hanged, while another named Kweku was burnt at stake. Another two were hanged up in chains and starved to death. Techi Monument in Clouds Towards Park can be visited in Port Maria, the parish capital of St. Mary. Techi Falls is accessible by the sea, but the overland route is considered by locals to be too tough to travel. The waterfalls have diminished over the years and mainly eroded rocks mark the course. The exact location of the cave where the remains of Techi's men were found is still unknown. Techi's rebellion was like many other Atlantic African organized liberation movements, put down quickly and mercilessly by colonial officials. Plantation owners severely punished rebels. However, the spin off movement lasted for several months and even years after the main movement was crushed. The cost of these continuing rebellions was a major factor in the British government outlawing enslavement throughout the empire.